Hello again, welcome to Lesson 5 in the Volume Series of Lessons at National 5. Today we're going to look at reverse volume and, and what I mean by that is situations where you are given the volume and you have to come back from there to find a piece of information that, uh, to do with the shape. So up until now you've looked at all of these different formulas. Now we have five formulas looked at so far. The volume of prism on the top left there. So the prism in here, the cylinder here, and both of those you need to remember. They don't get given to you in the formula sheet. You need to be able to figure them out and use them in your exam. Here, your pyramid, your cone, and your sphere, each of which is on your formula sheet. You don't need to remember. You just need to know how to use it. Now, these are just things you have to know, have to be able to work with. What we're going to look at today is we're going to look at three different examples of where you're given the formula, uh, the volume, and you need to work back to find either the height or the radius or the area of the base. Or cross section as it stands. Now, just three examples, again, straight into your notes. And we'll just talk through these, and you'll get a lot of examples of these in class to work with as well, because this is the, the more complicated questions around this topic. So the first example, we're looking to find the height of the cone if we know what the volume is. Now we know we're working with a cone. So straight away the first thing I'm going to do is right, if I'm working with a cone, I'm going to be using this formula in some way, shape or form. That is the volume of a cone, that's on my formula sheet, I'm going to get that down. My next step, same as when I was finding the volume, is I'm going to substitute in. But this time the only difference is I'm going to be substituting in different things. So do I know what the volume is? Oh yeah, it tells me. The volume is 150. So I'm going to substitute that in as 150. That's just a number so that can stay. Pi is just a number so that can stay. Do I know what the radius is? Yeah, the radius is over here. That's 4.2. So I can multiply that by 4.2 squared. And the height, do I know what the height is? No, I'm still to find that. So that's going to be in my equation just as h. So they are getting to that point. You're at least picking up a couple marks just for being able to substitute in what you know. Now your problem and your issue is being able to rearrange it so that you have h equals. You want to find out what h is, you need to have a formula that tells you what h is. Now all you have there in that second line is a big row of multiplies by h. Now to cancel out a multiply, we all know this, we've done it in National 4, we've done it in probably S1 and 2 as well, all we need to do is divide. So it's going to be that 150 divided by all of that, one third multiplied by pi, multiplied by 4.2 squared. Now this is where the guys with the, the new Casio really come into their own because it becomes dead easy because all you have to do is make your calculator look like how I've written that or how you will write it. If you don't have a new calculator, you're going to have to write on top, be right on top of how to calculate using your calculator. And uh, it becomes a little bit trickier. So if possible, acquire yourself one of the new Casio's and it'll make things like this and standard deviation anything that's got a big minging formula to use it makes it much easier to use and type in so you take that into your calculator you get the answer 8.12 oh actually let's go a bit further than that before I do my dots 8.12015 and so on and if we do that to 3 sig figs 1, 2, 3, 0 rounds it down so it's going to be 8.12 centimetres. Now, every question is going to be like that, getting the formula that you need down, substituting in, and then rearranging and calculating. It's just, what formula do we use? Is rearranging going to be a little bit trickier? Okay, that's example one. This video may be a little bit longer, by the way, just because it's a little bit harder. I apologise for that, but I'm hoping if we can do three examples well, then it'll be a little bit nicer for us. Okay, so same idea here, we're told the volume, we're told part of the information for the cylinder, but we need to find the radius. So my cylinder, from memory this time, because I don't get this in the formula sheet, is pi r squared h. And this is what I said earlier on, for this type of question it's much, much easier if you use the formula in its full sense. So that's my formula, I need to substitute in what I know. The volume, do I know the volume? Yeah, I do, it tells me, it's 1130. 1130 is equal to pi, is just a number. My radius, I don't actually know my radius, it doesn't tell me, so that's just going to stay as r. 
and then my height is 6. So I'm multiplying that in. Now you're, you're halfway there, you've got your formula, you've substituted, now we need to rearrange. And this can be a little bit tricky here, but still, it's fine. We've got a big row of multiplies. To get rid of all those multiplies at once, we just need to divide by everything there. So it'll be 1130 divided by pi times 6. And that's going to leave me not with the radius, but with the radius squared this thing. So I'm not quite there yet. I don't want to know the radius squared. I want to know the radius. So to get rid of that squared, all I need to do is square root everything on that side. So 1130 over pi times 6, and that will give me r. So r is going to be equal and again. A good calculator comes in very handy here. And you take that in, it gives you 7.7426 and so on. Three sig figs, one, two, three. The two will round it down. So it's going to be r equals 7.74. And you'll notice how similar that is to the last example. Get your formula down, substitute in, rearrange, calculate every time. And the last example we're going to look at is a little bit different. It's no trickier, it's just a little bit different. Here we're given two volumes, or two shapes, and we're given enough information on this left-hand side one. We're given enough information there to calculate the volume. We're not told enough here to calculate the volume, though. But our question is asking us for the radius of that cylinder. Now, we call these questions conservation of volume. The volume has been conserved. It's telling us in the question that these two shapes have the same volume. So if we know the volume of one, the left-hand side, the cone, we can use it to calculate the radius of the shape on the right. So it's a case of here, we know that's the volume of a cone, so it's V is equal to pi r squared h. Pi is pi, r here is 5, and the height is 15. So we go to our calculator, we type it in, and we get the answer 392.699, so on. Let's do it to 3 sig figs, 393 centimetres cubed. So that volume there has to be the same as the volume of the cylinder. So we can then do exactly the same thing we're doing in example 2. It's just a case of we had to figure out the volume first. So the volume here, we're talking about a cylinder, so it's pi r squared h. Okay, again, we have to remember that. The volume we know from over here is 393. Pi is just pi, radius, don't know what that is yet. We we'll calculate it, and the height is 30. We need to rearrange, cancelling out a load of multiplies, so we're going to divide. So 393 over pi times 13 is equal... Well, that's r squared, it's going to be less if we cancel out the pi and the 13. So r is going to be the square root of 393 over pi times 13. Now I'm going to have to apologise here, I'm running out of space, so I'm going to have to jump straight to the answer and not do my rounding line. But you guys should. So it's going to be 393, the square root of 393 over pi times 13, which will give me 3.10 centimetres. 3.10 centimetres when you get to the end. Now that's quite a standard question, calculate the volume of something, testing out that you know how to calculate the volume, but also including something that's a little bit trickier in there. Now, I'm going to do two example or one example to try like that example at the end of a conservation where you're told the volume of, or you can able to calculate the volume in part A and then use that in part B. Just be careful here, it does say that the volume is double that of the sphere, so you can use the volume in the figure, but not straight away. And what I'll do is, if you pause it now, I'll put the answers up in a wee second. And there you go there. Okay, any questions, come in and ask us. We'll extend you right on with that stuff. You can get a lot of practice here, because that's the kind of trickier stuff in volume. Thank you very much. See you later.